Good afternoon. It's Brian Shannon from AlphaTrends.net. Uh, today is Tuesday, the 28th of October, 2008, and we saw a huge rally here again today. Uh, the S&P 500 finished with a gain of $9.65, or just about 11.5%. You can see here that as big as today's rally was, we're still clearly in a downtrend, but you do have to be impressed with the ability of the market to rally as strong as it did uh, on this big volume in front of the Federal Reserve meeting tomorrow so it seems as though you know hopefully the worst is behind us for now um, each day you know you come in expecting one thing and get another thing yesterday uh, I was expecting a, a lot more downside based on this close here but instead we saw a gap higher the market then uh, sold off a little bit and later in the day it took out the uh, uh, recent resistance levels that we've been looking at in here that also coincided with that declining five-day moving average and uh, it was just up on up and away from there. I'd recorded a uh, video earlier that's only uh, shown on my blog. So the people who are looking at uh, YouTube, I had shown a video of how I traded from this point uh, on, and that was a uh, live recording. So uh, I was trading the, the cues. Uh, anyways, the S&P 500 obviously remains in a downtrend, but a great day today. So uh, we've got to take what we can get here. We've got a very volatile environment. Uh, here we're looking at a 30 minute time frame. You can see that this downtrend line that's been intact since about mid-September is still intact. So perhaps this is where this market rallies up to next. We've also got the potential uh, l larger level of potential resistance right up here around uh, 98 and a half, 99. So uh, if the market can continue to add to these uh, levels, then uh, th these these gains, then perhaps we're forming a more solid bottom that we can uh, build build from. But it's still going to take a long time to straighten out these weekly time frames. I don't want to harp on that because today the bulls had a good day and let's take it for what it's worth, which was a great day, uh, especially if you were trading on the long side here uh, later on in the afternoon. So uh, we did uh, we did get back above this level that we gapped down to uh, that was last Wednesday. Uh, so this was uh, uh, last Tuesday's close, and we're just short of filling that gap in there. So that's something to be aware of as well. That this, uh, you know, this had been a little bit of support at about 95 and a half, and uh, still a real nice trade up to that level if it can continue there. But this rate of ascent shows uh, desperation in the turn, in, in uh, you know, basically on the parts of the shorts uh, who came into cover, and uh, you know. Great day, though, for, for being long. I had sold, uh, as I said I would, all of my long position at, you know, and right at the end of the day, which was a, a, a good decision because they, they closed right on their highs, obviously. Uh, let's take a look at uh, gold. Gold was up a little bit today, uh, adding to its bounce, but it has made that lower low here uh, on the weekly time frame as well. So perhaps it can get a rally uh, up towards that declining 50-day moving average, but I, I it's tough for me to see anything that's going to turn it past that level. We've got diminishing volume on this rally. Uh, on the 30-minute time frame, you can see a, just a little bit of resistance just uh, above where we had uh, closed, so at about $74 a share. And it is back above that five-day moving average, so perhaps we can get a little bit of a bounce in here, but gold, again, I would, uh, I, you know, looks looks more uh, like the S&P 500 did about, uh, you know, six months or so ago. So, uh, be careful in there if you're if you're trading gold. The uh, oil was up a dollar ninety today. Obviously, still just in a horrible de decline. Still below that declining five-day moving average. So, uh, no reason to be uh, involved in the long side on that. Russell 2000 was up eight percent today, up three dollars and fifty-nine cents. Here we see that uh, the volume wasn't quite as big in there on this bounce. Um, you know, looking at the 30-minute time frame, we've got that. Uh, uh, big mess from back here on this day. Let's take, again, to draw a trend line that, that captures basically the essence of the trend. We could draw a trend line off this top up here somewhere, but obviously that would, wouldn't really provide much value. So what we want to do is we want to look at, again, the essence of trend, which is defined by, I think, uh, you know, best defined by this uh, trend line here. That brings us, you know, if the market can continue to rally up towards that level, that'll get us up just under $50 a share which we're at 48.45 right now. We did see a lower low uh, once again in the Russell 2000, but uh, and, and not quite as strong a bounce. The uh, you know the 8% rally versus close to 12% obviously in the SPY. But uh, you know the market you know from failed moves 
come fast moves, and you've got to be quick to uh, to to get involved and in, and in, uh, in, in, uh, have that flexibility of opinion that that I had talked about in the previous video. So um, here on the uh, on the five minute time frame, let's take a look at the ten minute time frame. We did get above this level here, uh, which has been uh, you know we broke this pattern of lower highs as well. But this is where we had that five day moving average at about 48. Hopefully over the next few days these markets can rally a little bit, pull back, find some support at that five-day moving average as the five-day moving average flattens out, and perhaps we can uh, maybe even build a, a multi-month uh, low. It doesn't mean it will be the low, but you know one of these types of lows that we get to trade from the long side for a couple months. No one ever knows where the bottom is until well after the fact. So when a rally materializes, it's it's irrelevant to say that was the low or the bottom. What we want to do is position ourselves accordingly, listen to the message of the market, and ride those rallies as long as you are comfortable with, based on whatever time frame it is that you look at. And and that's you know something that I had talked talked about also in the book about which time frames you should use if you're an investor, if you're a swing trader, or if you're a day trader. The um, uh, let's take a look at the financials. The financials were up huge as well, up 14 percent with their $1.86 uh, cent gain. So uh, looking at the 30 minute time frame here, I think that this trend line best defines uh, the the recent activity in this market so you can see that we ha we did break above that and also we broke uh, ab back above this level here that had led to the recent most recent decline that level had acted as resistance back in here as well so right about that fourteen dollar and sixty cent level I think that's going to be important as far as support goes if it pulls back a little bit further intraday because it tests the five day moving average I think that's good uh, th that is it's still constructive action in other words that uh, we could see uh, maybe this level fourteen dollars and sixty cents uh, not hold but as long as it holds above that five day moving average that five day moving average starts to flatten out and then turn higher then perhaps we can build a series of higher highs and higher lows uh, in that late late day video I'd also talked about the semiconductors and the, the this group was a little bit stronger uh, today earlier uh, and and that's what, what part of my reason was to, to get involved on the long side because you'd seen that this group actually had been the worst and I haven't mentioned the semiconductors in a while, but what I had said when we last visited is perhaps we're going to even go back and test those 2002 lows. And you can see we actually undercut the 2002 lows in the semiconductors. So this group came down at that point. No one had been making money since about 1997 if you were a buy and hold investor in the semiconductors. And then on the weekly time frame and daily time frame, we saw that uh, last Friday that that push to new lows. Uh, the market did reverse, and then we're putting it on the uh, let's put it on the 30-minute time frame. Uh, this is uh, you know this is this is a tough uh, to to chart in because of the. Um uh, because of the uh, because it occurred on the open and failed so quick but you can see it is still relevant that we had broken past that level and this is where we would expect you know the potential for resistance there had been resistance there once in the past uh, above that maybe twenty two dollars I don't want to get carried away with upside objectives because I'm not bullish about this market still uh, generally speaking we're in a downtrend so you still have to be very careful but obviously when you see a rally like this you have to stand up and take notice the uh, the but the semiconductors broke past their uh, resistance recent recent resistance of the last three or four days uh, basically they were the first group to do it here today um, it, at this point breaking past that it was about nineteen dollars and ten cents and they continue to charge higher right up into the close and you can see here uh, you know the market the day the the uh, the market recaptured the daily VWAP uh, right in here at about $18.60. And then each one of these little, you know, look at each one of these uh, surges in volume. It came as the market rallied, as we saw increasing prices. So there was clearly a rush to get involved here, followed by these little consolidations that occurred uh, not only uh, by pulling back price-wise, but through time in here as well, that the market had corrected and allowed it to digest those gains. The sellers didn't reemerge, and then it continued higher. So the semiconductors, uh, you know, 
perhaps we see them rally up a little bit further towards 20 and a half. We've got the Federal Reserve tomorrow, so you got to be very careful with that. Um, those those uh, you know Federal Reserve meetings are, are a period of, of amazing volatility, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how vol volatile it is compared to what we've been experiencing lately in previous. Um, uh, uh, Fed meetings because obviously volatility is something that's increased uh, massively here over the last several uh, weeks. The NASDAQ 100, looking at a 30-minute time frame first, you see we're still within the confines of this downtrend line. And breaking a downtrend line doesn't assure a reversal, and being below it doesn't mean it can't reverse. But you have to be aware that these are potential levels where sellers may come back into the market or buyers may go on strike, basically. So this prior, uh, these little prior peaks here at about 34 or so, uh, 33.80 or so, um, and also that trend line at about 33.20. What we saw in here today was that uh, you know the market gapped higher. It was stuck within this range here, $30 and about 25, 30 cents. Uh, it also held above this level. That uh, so it was basically stuck in the middle of this range here. Uh, later in the day, I said I would be more impressed if it could jump back above that five-day moving average, pull back towards about 30, and then it could build a, 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 a on a rally up past $31 today. We closed right at 31.86, so it was a huge day in here. Percentage-wise, it was up 11 uh, percent. We've expended a lot of energy in here. Doesn't mean it can't continue higher, but remember that you know these bear markets rallies do tend to fail and they'll, you'll have other opportunities to to get involved again down the road maybe not exactly at these prices but volatility shall should remain high so it remains a, uh, a day trading environment basically